Yeah, it's also a mystery for me. I uh, don't know what's going to happen. I do. I'm Matt Dukovsky. I teach physics and chemistry here at ACE. Uh, I am a physicist, though. But what we're going to be talking about today is a little biochemistry. And um, yeah, I'm going to show you a demonstration. There is a fire hazard, so we do have a fire extinguisher, and I will be wearing proper safety equipment. Um, can I just click this and it'll go? Ah, okay. So today we're going to be talking about alcohol and the liver. So most people here are old enough to drink, I believe. And as you learn in biology, uh, you drink alcohol and it's fun and it tastes good sometimes, but it's also a toxin. It's not good for your body. Luckily, we have something in our body called the liver, which helps process that and detoxify the alcohol. This way. Okay, so it's extremely vital. Uh, it does a lot of things. It's a extremely useful and necessary organ in your body. It's located right here. See my nice image. Um, it does a lot of things. It synthesizes, so it put things it puts things together. It puts together amino acids, proteins, and carbohydrates. It stores vitamins, glucose, and uh, other things, enzymes as well. And a big thing is it breaks down insulin and toxins. And these toxins include alcohol. So, how does it do this? And I'm going to show you a couple formulas, but you don't have to take notes. It's not obviously. Um, the liver takes this alcohol, you drink it, it processes it um, into acetic acid, which is a lot like vinegar. So enzymes do this breakdown. And we've got two main reactions, and we're going to be looking at them today. And the cool thing with reactions is they usually end with a bang. Not always, but in this case, it might. Um, the first reaction we have starts with hydrogen peroxide, and an enzyme called catalase makes water and oxygen. This doesn't have a laser, does it? No. That would be cool. Um, our other thing, which is cut off by my PowerPoint, is it's another enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. And that's, uh, that takes ethanol, which is your common drinking alcohol. There's another coenzyme. And this breaks it down into acetaldehyde and hydrogen. And if we look at these two things, they're extremely flammable. So is acetaldehyde. So we're going to take a look at this process right now in a demonstration, which I hope is very interesting for you guys. It might fizzle out literally. So if it doesn't, we have a YouTube. If it doesn't work well, we have a YouTube. And you can boo me, but that's OK. Um, we're going to see what this looks like. So ethanol and a hydrogen peroxide solution. I'll put this in my pocket. We always start off with safety, lab coat and goggles. and. What I think is really cool about this reaction is in my MYP3 class recently, we've been talking about chemical reactions. And I have a few of my students out here, but I can't see them. And one of the things we talk about with the reaction is it's, of course, when two or more or one or more things mix to create new things. A little tight. And you can observe this by seeing bubbles or a change of color or a change of temperature. And what we did recently was we were mixing metals and acids and carbonates and acids, and we wanted to test what the gases were. And I don't know if you guys, if you want to remember how we can test these gases. Do you remember how, Gopal? <laughs> or I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, you can test if they're flammable. Um, so we can test hydrogen to see if it's flammable. We can test other things. What I will be doing in this demonstration is I'm going to put a mixture of hydrogen peroxide here. H2O2 and ethanol uh, in this beaker. Let me put on my goggles. So I have a nice beaker. Very precise, I know. So this was the ethanol. This is the type of alcohol when you that you find in your spirits and your your favorite vodkas. If you're, but you're not 18, so you can't, not all of you. This is hydrogen peroxide. We will mix it. OK? And the interesting thing about this mixture, I have a nice shield here so you guys don't get hurt. So we can test this now. And you guys can see, if I hold it above, it's inert. There's nothing 
there's nothing burning. Nothing, the gases released are not burning, right? Put that there. All right. I also have, from the butcher on Saturday, so I hope nothing's broken down, I have here some lamb liver. And like we talked about before, the liver is host to many enzymes. And one of these in the blood is catalase. And I'm going to try to get some blood out of here, but I don't think it's going to work. There's not much blood. So we'll just put the liver in there. So the blood has the catalase enzyme, and the liver has alcohol dehydrogenase. Let's rip it apart. Sorry. OK. So we can put this liver in here. And immediately, even as I just dip it in, you guys can kind of see this reaction occurring. I don't know if you see all these bubbles. Should I bring it closer? Do you guys see these bubbles? Lots of bubbles, Lots of bubbles yes. So like any good MYP3 student could tell you, you get a nice little foam. Let's give it a little mix. Take this off. Let me get all my safety apparatuses here. <laughs> safety first, right? So we have this nice big foam. I don't know if people can see. And if we look back at our reaction, that's my phone, sorry. <laughs> if we look back at the reaction, our products, what was created in the reaction was O2, hydrogen, and acetylaldehyde, all very flammable. They should be in this foam, which is still reacting, but it's kind of not getting as foamy as I'd like. So let's see what happens. I do have a fire extinguisher on hand. If it's not as big or as crazy as I would have hoped. Maybe we'll watch it YouTube. So this is to test, like we do in MYP3, what kind of gases, if they're flammable or not. Here we go. So I take it you guys are hearing what's happening now. Can anyone not hear it? It might be hard to see, but there is a large flame coming up. I don't know if you can, can you zoom? <laughs> is that possible? Can you see the fire? I don't know, maybe put my hand back there. So the bubbling and fizzing you still hear, it wasn't as big an explosion as I'd hoped. I think I needed more blood and more foam, sorry. Um, the, the things you hear now are still the reactions occurring. So there's still liver reacting with the alcohol. It's converting it into less toxic things, um, acetylaldehyde, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now you can see it's gone out. But if you look, sometimes if we give it a little swirl, it comes back on fire. No, it doesn't this time. Maybe you guys will smell. Can you smell it? it smells like cooked liver. I'll let it waft over there. No? So I thought this was cool to see how you can actually test what happens in reactions. Um, it's also interesting because this process happens in your body every single day. Um, you're not always drinking alcohol per se, but there are alcohols in a lot of foods we eat um, or things we drink that aren't just beer or wine. Um, so the dehydrogenase reacts even more. The blood, which I didn't have, unfortunately, usually makes a nice big foam that gets like a big foamy layer, and then it explodes. Um, of course, don't try this at home before I did it. Um, so it's a great way to see the products of this oxidation, so how the liver is processing this. Uh, what does this have to do with the future? I don't know. I guess you'll be drinking alcohol in the future. Maybe you can think about chemistry next time. Uh, you have a glass of wine. Uh, is it safe? 
I don't know. Yeah, it's of course in moderation. It's always safe to drink alcohol, and if you're of age, um, it's important to remember that all of this gas is produced in your liver as well. Take these off. All of this gas is produced in your liver, but it's then excreted through bile, through urine, through uh, your kidneys. So unless you light a fire in your liver somehow, you don't have to worry about this. We do, it's extremely important that we need a liver. That's why liver disease or liver cancer is so dangerous because it does exactly this. It takes harmful alcohols or toxins and breaks them down. It stores vitamins, it stores, it processes glucose. It does all of these cool things. So, liver, very important for the future, for your future. Um, any questions? And like I said, I'm a physicist. Sorry if I misexplain these things. I guess no questions. Cool, thank you guys. And we don't need to YouTube, right? No. Yeah.